Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past. And today we're heading back all the way to 1994 for the Spider-Man, the animated series, Hobgoblin's Wing Bomber by Toy Biz. It's even got the old-fashioned Hills sticker on it right there. Never actually got to go into a Hills department store. They closed in 1999, so really no one's going to be going in there anymore, but... Very cool to have that on the box. It's brand new. And when I say new, I mean, yeah, it's kind of beaten up a little bit. But that gorgeous artwork is still secure on the box. Hobgoblin just flying over New York, destroying everything in his path. I absolutely love how this came out. To see everything basically from season one's episode on the box is very, very cool. It's a winged vehicle with retractable pistol grip, pullback launcher, releases flaming pumpkin missiles, includes two sawtooth discs, two pumpkin bombs, and an armor mask. While well, the figures are not included. Oh man! Imagine getting that as a kid. <laughs> the disappointment. On the back side of the box, all the cross cells. You get to see the hobgoblin riding this giant wing bomber on his flying wing. And then you get... Hobgoblin himself again right there in the cross cells with Carnage, Venom, Smythe, and Doc Ock. You get to see the gorgeous Daily Bugle playset, the Tri-Spider Slayer, and Smythe's Battle Chair Attack Vehicle. Talk about that later. That's a video coming up. Nod, nod, wink, wink. Here's the barcode in case you're stuck in 1994 and somehow watching this. Be sure to call that Toy Biz toll-free customer service number. In case you're not aware, in Spider-Man the Animated Series Season 1, the Hobgoblin most notably made his debut because of reasons of toys. <laughs> they had all these Hobgoblin toys ready to go, and John Semper Jr. was forced to put him into the first season, even though, as comic readers, canonically, the Green Goblin always shows up before the Hobgoblin. But it was kind of interesting. Interesting switch, and one that the animated series really made work for itself. In the two-part episode, the Hobgoblin is hired by Norman Osborn to finally put an end to the kingpin. Peter Parker saves him, and in order to take another shot at Fisk, Norman Osborn gives Hobgoblin this giant wing bomber, which, just like the toy, and just like in the animated series, attaches to his normal flying glider, upon which he then begins to annihilate all of Greenwich Village and Spider-Man himself, thus ending part one and leading into, on a cliffhanger, Part two, not to worry, Spider-Man survives. Later on in the series, Green Goblin, when he finally made his debut, ended up using this same glider, and we'll see if his blue glider fits as well. Kind of be interesting to check out. I'm very excited about this. This is going to be fun. It's so nice to have a beautiful, brand new Hobgoblin wing bomber, box and all, instructions and all. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot retro cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new-ish 1994's Spider-Man the Animated Series Hobgoblin's Wing Bomber by Toy Biz. And just before I show it off all nice and proper, here's what it looks like. All tucked away, all sleeping for all these years. Twisty tied to the box and it's plastic. You even get to see it comes with a superhero collector's guide booklet showing off all the different Toy Biz Spider-Man products. One of my favorite things to always come with all these old Toy Biz figures was the catalog and it would show you all the different products like the projectors which i've shown off plush spider-man web of steel little miniature metal pieces and of course the web comics and you got all the five inch action figures wave one and wave two the kb wave the 10 inch figures the daily bugle playset. you can pause the video if you want to go ahead and read all of these they are just very cool product of their time, very 90s, very 80s all at once, and showing off Smice's chair, Hobgoblin's wing bomber, and the Tri-Spider Slayer, with, of course, the backside showing electronic talking and web gear. And I think that's something that's been lost to toy time is, of course, the diagrams, showing everything how it works in very precise detail. Love all the line work. Everything showing off what goes where, which stickers apply where. Here are the original stickers. I'm going to leave them off and keep them just like this, just because it, it just looks so dang good. I, I'm going to keep it exactly how it is. The first missile right here, it's a big pumpkin bomb. Again, something that fits in the front mouth and is from the Hobgoblin episode where he shoots it at Spider-Man. Same as these discs. 
They all shoot out, take down random billboards across Greenwich Village when he's fighting Spider-Man. And then you have it where Spider-Man's trying to hide in a vehicle and then also the dumpster. And he drops a couple in there and blows them up and he has to escape to the sewers. You do get an alternate face plate, which works, I think, for the most part. And then you have the more bat terrifying face with the wide open mouth. The faceplate is a little bit more on model, even so everything about this is a bit off model, but it still is trying to achieve what is seen on the animated series. The animated series is a little more stylized. On the underside, you do get to see all the different screw holes. You get wheels on the bottom, so you can wheel around Hobgoblin if you want, and then you get this really cool handheld style trigger lever right there so you can hold them and zoom them all around the city which as a kid is very cool and then you stick the glider right there and you got random levers and firing mechanisms for all the different pumpkin bombs so in totality it's a very cool looking wing bomber is it exactly on model no once you put this little face plate on it does look a little bit better I will say that. And then once you start putting all of the Hobgoblin arsenal in this thing, it really does come to life. Now, I'll show you one caveat to the whole thing, but for the most part, it looks pretty dang cool. And you take old Hobgoblin here on his smaller jet glider, right? Zoom him over. And then what you're going to do is kind of fit it in between these two little notches right here, which the glider is designed for. You're going to want to pop the face off the glider, slip it in, and then kind of <laughs> you kind of have to figure it out. You put it up again just enough, slip this in, then push it back up, then pop it back in so everything fits. It's complicated. I couldn't imagine doing this as a kid. And of course, you pop old Hobgoblin right there on his glider. And bingo bango, it looks like it flew right out of Spider-Man the Animated Series. The purples, the oranges, it's very cool. Now we gotta take care of old Wilson Fisk, right? We have some money coming in, fingers crossed, which, <laughs> if you ever watch that episode, he never gets it. But Norman Osborn's paying us a lot of money to take down old Fisk, so we're gonna throw everything at this guy. This is where the weapons get real complicated. To push everything in, not only push everything in to have it work and fire, which it does, then you gotta have Hobgoblin, who doesn't have any peg holes, stand up straight, which he does not. <laughs> and that's where it gets real front. He falls over every single time, and he's such a brick of a figure, Kingpin's not going anywhere. So let's pop Hobgoblin off and start zooming around. Let's drop a pumpkin bomb on him. Nothing, right? <laughs> This is why the Kingpin was such a brick of a figure. But you get the idea. With Spider-Man, let's see if we have better luck right here. We're going to leave Hobgoblin off. Make sure the disc is all the way in. You kind of have to finagle it a bit. Fire it off. At least they work. They fire nicely, so that works. And, yeah, you kind of hit <laughs> Spider-Man. Let's drop a pumpkin bomb on him. And bingo, bango, we got him. He's not escaping in no sewers anytime soon. That's for sure. This is... Awesome. I love the way it looks as it just stands on your shelf. When you start maneuvering it around, it's a total pain in the butt. It really is. Hobgoblin doesn't stand well on it. He looks great just as a standstill, but you just trying to start as a kid if you're playing with this zooming around the city or whatever. No, it's not going to work. Green Goblin. He fits on there nicely. He looks good. Straight out of the animated series. So just as Hobgoblin, Green Goblin works well. And I just think that, that that's just... I don't know. There's just something about that that just screams turning point right there. Pumpkin bombs and all. Go kidnap J. Jonah Jameson and the rest that wronged you. You can put the Green Goblin's green glider on there. It actually slips in a whole heck of a lot easier. But of course, it's not animated series accurate. So why would you? But now you get to see it in real time. And first time for me, too. <laughs> Eh, it's not too shabby, but it's it's just okay. I do have this smaller release Goblin Glider. This is more of a pullback. It moves forward. It shoots out two pumpkin bomb missiles. It was supposed to have a Hobgoblin figure on it. I've had this for quite some time. It does have peg holes, so it does keep Hobgoblin on just a little bit better, but it looks more like a chibi looking thing, right? It's too small. You can put Green Goblin on there as well if you really wanted to, but in either sense... It's cool, but it doesn't really work. Now, to put, let's say, Arachnophobia Spider Goblin on this guy, Hop Goblin Spider Man put together, 
That looks awesome. I have to say, very, very cool. Almost Demogoblin, right? Jack-o'-lantern, just for fun. Yeah, you can put him on there. I'm sorry, Mad Jack for some of you out there. I just think that this character is just having a ball on this thing. This is cool. The second release of the Hobgoblin from like the Web Flyers. Yeah, he works. I think he's just missing a cape, right? There we go. This is from a later release two-pack, more darker costume, more comic book type Hobgoblin. And yeah, I mean, you can leave the glider off, leave it on, whatever you want to do, or go straight up McDonald's. <laughs> This old-fashioned McDonald's Hobgoblin figure alleviates all manners of giant vehicles and everything else. Figures, accessories, he just sits right into his little goblin car. So you can go this route as well. So that's really going to wrap it up for my look at the 1994 Spider-Man the Animated Series. Hobgoblins, Wing Bomber, Pumpkin Bomber, whatever I've called it over the years. It is awesome. It's very cool. It's a must-have if you are a Toy Biz collector. Playing with it, on the other hand, I don't think I missed much as a kid, to be quite honest with you. I would have been more frustrated than anything. It's frustrating, this thing. The weapons don't really stay in. It topples over. Hobgoblin's gonna go face first. So, in that sense, unless you're just displaying it, I would say... Yeah, just don't don't play with this thing. It's it's not something to give to the kiddos, especially in this day and age. It's just a great looking centerpiece. Something that's straight out of the animated series goes well with Hobgoblin and Green Goblin. But I am curious to know what you guys think about this Wing Bomber. Is it for you? Will you be grabbing it? Have you already grabbed it? Did you have it as a kid? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Hobgoblin. More Hobgoblin. I think that's that's the number one takeaway here, right? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, and when I say more Hobgoblin, I wouldn't mind Marvel Legends taking a crack at their retro line, right? Put some pink red in that cape of his. Give him a, a blaster, plenty of pumpkin bombs. I'll be set. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.